The open source community is a huge collection of often interrelated projects and initiatives. So how can telcos and their vendor partners best engage and benefit? Chris, you're an ideal person to talk to um, about this because as well as being president of Ericsson Software Technology, you're board member of OpenStack Foundation and also the Linux Foundation. Yes. So, so how, how do telcos and their, their vendor partners engage with, with open source? Uh, the same way as everyone else. Um, at the end of the day, we, we need to contribute, we need to bring our requirements, we need to bring our needs, uh, we need to expose that to the community, realize that in the community, uh, and then of course consume it as, as part of how we operate and run networks. So if we look at specifically OpenStack, um, the message this week that's, that's, that's coming out is that OpenStack wants to sort of shift slightly towards an open infrastructure direction, which implies probably more collaboration with other communities. A lot more. I think OpenStack over the last couple of years has come has come a long way in realizing more than just the infrastructure as a service space. Mm -hmm. um, topics such as edge, edge computing start to drive the technology in different directions. Uh, other communities such as Kubernetes community that handles a lot of workloads and, and application deployment start to subsume and, and improve on, on the early work of the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, and, and through these emerging technologies, we find ourselves in a, in a need to essentially find how does the OpenStack provide to these technologies? How do they provide back into OpenStack uh, from an infrastructure positioning perspective? Um, how do we best enable uh, Kubernetes and, 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 uh, and container-based workloads? Um, how do we best enable distribution of workloads and, and cloud technologies towards the network edge or, or, or in federation through the network? Um, a lot of these questions start to drive this, this need to sort of evolve as a, as a, as a community and, and, and spend a lot more time looking at adjacencies uh, rather than just trying to solve the, the internal problems that, that, that OpenStack has mastered in the past. So what are some of the, the physical challenges in ensuring we have this meaningful collaboration? Um, that's a good question. I, really, at the end of the day, it comes down to uh, understanding the problem space mm. that each group is, is trying to address. Uh, a foundation in general forms because they want to resolve uh, a problem. They want, they want to solve something. They, they have a, a mission. Um, and they generally tend to internalize around that mission. And, and that's the right thing to do, really solve and, and find the solution to that problem. In, in doing so, uh, you end up with, 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 with ideas and areas sort of evolving around the edges. Uh, when that starts to occur, it's good to sort of raise the eyes and, and look around at other communities. It's like, well, here we have this challenge and, and here's a group over here focused on it. So, so establish, establishing a good communication between the two groups, um, it can happen between boards, just sort of what are you doing and how are we doing it. Uh, at the end of the day, it really happens when, when the engineers, when the d designers and testers start to, start to try and solve problems together. And uh, I think from an open stack community perspective, that's something that we see a lot of now. Um, it, back in the days when I was in OPNFV, that was a real focus for us. Uh, and now we see, uh, for instance, the cloud native community, the open stack community collaborating in similar ways. Uh, we'll come to telcos in a second, but if we focus on vendors, um, there's a massive shift going on, and it's a cultural shift as well, um, to, to, to fully embrace the new way of working and, yep. and this new world we live in. How, how, how do you feel that, that vendors in the telecoms industry generally um, are adapting to this change? Um, we're adapting. I mean, it, it's, it's a huge challenge. Mm. We, we, we come from a space where uh, we're very protective of our intellectual property and our intellectual assets, and, and, and we've been for the last decades essentially building products and, and taking them to market and competing on the open market. And now we find ourselves in a situation where we don't necessarily build products and take them to the market. We, we share requirements, uh, we collaborate on code, uh, and then we try and partner with, with, with operators uh, and, and, and establish good business relationships. So from a, from a vendor's perspective, um, the fundamental shift is in, in a lot to do with the business model of how we approach and work with customers um, when it comes to these types of technologies. And, and the second challenge is really on the engineering side where, where engineers are used to mastering their own domain. Um, you know, we do this and this is the choice we make and, and you know, very, very direct and, and decisive. And, and you end up in a situation in open source where you have your idea and then you, you share it and, and discuss it and then we find a common resolution. Uh, and for the most part, that's because the software that we're working with isn't specifically for that purpose that, that we want it for. It's a shared resource. Um, so that cultural shift in, in how we approach research and development is very important. Um, and you see companies like Ericsson, we're making some fundamental changes in, in how we structure our R&D in order to, to accommodate and, and grow and emerge around that, that uh, ecosystem. 
What about the telcos? Are, are the telcos em embracing the ideas behind open networking and open standards? I, I, I guess some of the, the larger ones with, with the resources and the vision um, are making huge inroads. Yep. But there's a lot of telcos out there who probably don't have that luxury. Um, do they need to do more? Do they need to get more engaged? Um, or is, is, it, is it sufficient for a lot of them just to kind of sit on the, on, on the periphery a bit and just, just let the, the bigger guys do all the, uh, the heavy lifting? Um, so we've seen you know, Verizon, AT&T, China Mobile it, it really driving and leading. Um, and and that's, that's their role in, in, in the global telecommunications world is, is to establish that leadership. Um, I think that's, that's healthy and that's good. The other, the other providers that are not necessarily leading in, in that area, for instance, um, or, or aren't trying to define that space, um, they, they should still engage. They should understand the technology, they should know how the technology works, but you know, whether they need to be at the forefront and, and standing on stage and arguing with these guys about the right way to do it or the wrong way to do it, um, we all engage in different ways. We all engage according to our business objectives. Uh, we all engage uh, according to our own capacity and capability. Um, I think what you'll see moving forwards with, with some of the smaller players, and you'll even see it at the conference here, is that they're now starting to come and they're learning. Um, I, I heard stories of uh, service providers collaborating for the first time at this conference um, and, and sharing war stories and actually moving forwards. And, and I, I heard glowing reports of those meetings uh, where, it, where it's occurred and, and we start to see more and more service providers and, and network operators coming in and learning and, and getting the skills and understanding the way that these technologies can, can be consumed. Well, that's really good to hear. Um, Chris, as usual, thanks so much for joining us on Telecom TV. You're welcome.